Hi everybody and welcome back to my basement once again. Today I'm wearing the Vida FP shirt and that only means one thing. I actually received a new bag from Vida FP of course. And let's see what's inside. Boom! I actually love this top down camera. I can finally show you stuff very very easily. This is the invoice. First of all we have stickers and a couple of cool keychains. And then right here we have their new Express LRS 2.4 GHz super super tiny receivers. This is the one with the tower antenna and this is the one with the ceramic one. And lastly we have the start of the show. Here is the Vita FPV Express LRS 2.4 GHz 1 watt edition transmitter. Look at this black nice thingy. And down there we have a USB-C cable. Also finally they include one because in the old one they didn't. Very nice Moxon antenna. And of course, you have your manuals right here. And today I'm not only gonna talk about this, but actually about these, cause we have two of them. BDFPV asked me specifically to talk about the differences between the two transmitters. But before I do this, please remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Help me grow this channel and support my efforts. Let's go. Well, let's start from the beginning. What are these two modules for? Actually, it's very easy. You got your own radio this is a big radio with a micro module bay port on the back and these modules right here allow you basically you slot them in and they allow you to use express lrs on your radio and express lrs if you don't know is one of the best rf links so far basically it's the fastest has the best range and it's totally open source every brand is getting their own express lrs compatible receiver and all of them are intercompatible and most drones coming up right now they have express lrs as an option so in my opinion is the best one to get right now you have access to basically all drones is all unified and it's retro compatible with like r9 and stuff like that you can modify it and make it compatible it's amazing and it's universal it's the best one in my opinion Let's take a look at physical differences first. So, as you can see, they look pretty, pretty, pretty similar, but there is a key difference. Of course, the color black and white. But, as you can see here, there is the USB port, and here the hole is much bigger. This is because, this is one of the complaints that BDFPV received. This port didn't fit regular USB-C cables. But I have to say they were very nice and they offered free uh, compatible USB-C cable. But luckily they solved here, I tested with big cables and everything works. And also they provide uh, USB-C cable in the box so you don't have issues here. Very, very nice move from BDFPV here. So, taking a look at the side, it's pretty much the same at the back. Here you can see you have a new difference. Here you have only the pins, here you have the pins, and here there are dip switches. And basically these dip switches are made to perform different functions. 2 and 4 up is regular operation, so basically you use your receiver. All down only 1 and 2 up is for updating the firmware, and all down and only the last 3 up is for updating the backpack function. And actually this is another difference, this one support backpack, this one does not. Backpack is a feature that basically allows you to connect to other gear you have like your goggles, your VTX and stuff like that, and you can change via Express LRS like your uh, uh, VTX channel, your VTX power, and it changes both in your goggles and in your VTX, but you need extra hardware to do that. And lastly, here is the same, and you have these two ports, which are basically to replace these ones if your um, radio doesn't have it. And that's all for the physical differences. There is actually another difference. Both have a fan, but inside this one doesn't have a heatsink. This one has a heatsink. And this was a complaint on the old one because people were uh, scared that it would over it. Actually, this is maximum 500 milliwatts. And BitFPV tested it and it never went above 70 degrees. But this one is 1 watt. So they added a heatsink. And now it's very, very good. It um, dissipates heat and it's very nice and cool. Also, the white one you can choose between 2.4 GHz and 915 MHz. Here, it's only 2.4 GHz for now. I guess they are making the 915, but for now it's only 2.4 GHz, but 1 Watt again. And there is one last difference, and that's price. This one is 40 bucks, and the black one is 50 bucks. And in my opinion, for 10 bucks, go with the black one, no doubt. And my only gripe about it is I like the white color more than this one. It's Stormtrooper. This one looks professional. It's not bad, but 
I like this one better and the way the light shines in it. I'm gonna show you both of them with the light on so you can see. Look at the animation, boom, the light turns on and it's very very cool to have this blue light shining through, I like it. And this one had the deep switch but actually I need to update it because it's the old version, the new one, the deep switch works very nice. The black one for sure blends more with the radio and look when you turn it on, it doesn't have an animation, you see? I mean, the light is nice as well, it's just less pronounced, it's more professional as I said, and it's not bad, but actually the best thing is this menu works and you can use it with the... Ah, it's so nice, you can change stuff with the deep switch here. And talking about menus, here is a caveat, because BDFP decided to add these OLED screens and five position switches, and that's a very good idea, the only issue is ExpressLRS doesn't support them yet and it will support them in 2.1 version but we are at 2.0.1 so it still needs a bit of time for it to be implemented and BDFPV are working with them but it's not available yet. But you saw me using the screens and the joystick for it and that's because I was using BDFPV own firmware for that. They made their own firmware, you can uh, go onto their website and check out the instruction on how to flash it, it's, it's very easy actually. And if you want to use ExpressLRS stock, you won't be able to use screen or switch, but you need to install on your SD card the Lua script for ExpressLRS and you can connect ExpressLRS on your screen. I will do it right now and show you. Boom. Model 11, I have it, the quick menu right here, down, 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 ExpressLRS. Okay, and as you can see, it loaded everything from the transmitter back here. And you can change a lot of stuff. And right now I have my laptop right here and I'm gonna show you how to update your transmitter because you need to follow the proper steps and you don't know it but today is another day and yesterday I was having issues. I basically my module wouldn't go over 500 milliwatts, this is one watt and I asked with FPV and they found the solution. Basically it was my fault totally. I was using an outdated Express LRS configurator. So be sure everything is updated because otherwise you will not find the right firmware for this transmitter. Because actually I installed the firmware for this transmitter into this one. There was no option for one watt, so I didn't know. I'm gonna show you how to do it properly. Now we are in the Express LRS configurator 1.3.3. Be sure it's the updated latest version. This is at the time of this video the latest. And you have the official releases, but there is no target for this specific black one. Because you see the TX Micro, this is the 500 milliwatts one, this is not the one watt. So it's not good. What you need to do is go to the BDFP website, download the right file. It's on their GitHub, you just follow the instructions there. And you, you unpack the file you just downloaded, and then you select the SRC file, the SRC folder. And you select that folder and you are ready. You select now, you see the 1000 milliwatts edition, which is the one watt, of course. I flash via USB, standard mode. Here, select regulatory domain. This one, not the EU one, otherwise, you will have the power limited to 10 milliwatts, which is not good. Here, you select your own binding phrase. Binding phrase, basically, your receiver has a binding phrase, your transmitter has one. They need to be the same, and you, not, you do not need binding. It's Amazing because every time you turn on every radio is gonna connect instantaneously amazing like Express LRS for this one feature is my favorite and Other stuff leave it as it is really it has a lot of functions But just go with the stock one and you won't have problems and now just build and flash Let's push this and it will do everything by itself. Just wait a bit And boom, everything is updated and everything finally works. The joystick, the screen, the one watt power and also Lua script all work. And that's amazing. You will need to use this technique, downloading firmware directly from BDFPV until ExpressLRS 2.1 comes out, which should be soon, but it's not a problem until this software works. One last thing, if you want to change the color of the LED on this module, on this white one, you can change it. On this one, it's stuck on auto and it will change based on your 
RF power, which is a nice indication, but someone wants to change and have it stuck on one color, like blue, for example. To do that, the BDFPV itself said you need to go into the config file and change it. Uh, I'm not a programmer, I didn't find the config file. If you're an expert, you can do it. Otherwise, I guess with another update, they will fix this stuff. Um, and that's all. And now let's go to Rimsler of the past. Bye. So wrapping up this review about the BDFPV Micro Express LRS 2.4 GHz receiver. Actually, BDFPV has beta in their name and I joke about it, but it's kind of true. This first product was kind of in beta and the core functionality worked, no problem. I tried it with their uh, Express LRS. Meter 65, you saw the review, it works perfect, flawless, but it has a lot of extra features that are not yet properly functioning, like the screen and the 5D button. With one software, something works. With the other software, something else works. It's kind of weird, but it's not totally their fault because, I mean, they introduced a new, a new feature with this OLED and 5D button, but ExpressLRS wasn't ready for it, so we have to wait for the developers to develop, basically. 2.1 should come soon, so these two products will be a lot better by then. And also, with this one, they got a little bit of critique with the uh, small hole for USB-C and no heatsink. So they made a much better product here with the one watt. And it's weird because they marked them as together, like you choose the 500 or the one watt. I see them as V1 and V2, of course. Which module should you buy? In my opinion, you should go with the black one, because of course it's 10 bucks more, but it has double the power, the fan makes it more reliable even if you live in hot climates. I don't know, it has more features, the backpack is more future ready, and it's only 10 bucks more. If the white one was like 25, 30 bucks, then it will be compelling, and maybe you just need it for flying, uh, like I do, tiny whoops and small stuff because I use 915 all the time. Maybe this one will be compelling, but for 10 bucks, of course, go with the best one. Another thing I would like to see, I'm nitpicking, but I would like this to come in white. Actually, you can buy this and then buy the $3 white cover with the big USB-C cable and just um, swap the electronics inside. But I don't know if people want to do that. So, BDFP, please make a stock white one because people are gonna love it. This black one is cool but also white is very nice. And that's all for this review. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Help me grow this channel and as always links in the description. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye!